Welcome to the Group 1 podcast where you will learn more about the reproductive processes of farm animals. I'm the host Megan Chan Ziying, name B0419-8005. Today we are going to talk about reproductive surgery on female animals with Govi and Anna. Hi! So, what is included in a female reproductive surgery? So, there are only a few types of surgical procedures including the caesarean section, prolapse utero vagina and prolapse uh, vagina lacerations. Nevertheless, we must first understand the surgical theory on the um, epidural anesthesia. What do you mean by the surgical principle? So, accordingly, the surgical principles include the cleansing and disinfection of all surfaces and equipment in the specialized surgical seat, uh, site and the availability of all necessary supplies and the minimization of traffic flow within the surgical site. Before sterilization, devices such as the gauze, drape, and etc. are cleansed and to eliminate the organic materials. So obviously, it is also covered the preoperative surgical monitoring, supportive and postoperative care which will also be discussed in greater detail later. Oh. How about uh, anesthesia? So the epidural and epidural injection drugs orientation is often used uh, to influence by it and it is influenced by those, which is for the caudal part, a low dosage or volume and the cranial epidural anesthesia is in high dosage or in large volume. So most commonly, Caudal or low dosage epidural anesthesia is used. This desensitized spinal caudal sacral nerves, high limb motor functions is unaffected. The tail, vagina, vulva, anus, rectum, caudal purpose, scrotum, and urethra are numbed by low volume epidural. This treatment is used to manage tenesmus and contractions during the rectum or vulva repair uterine relocations and dystocia repair. The ox spinal cord finish at the final lumbar vertebrae, but the meningeal sac reaches the third and fourth sacral segments. The injection locations for caudal and epidural anesthesia is between the coccygeal C1 and C2, which is identified by raising the tail in a palm hand position, with the C1 or C2 being the first apparent articulation behind the sacrum. Within one or two minutes, tail paralysis should begin. One or two hours later pass, the larger dose have greater effects. The, tau- the cow will lie down and the local anesthetic injections and the lumbar sacral junctions create an anterior block with less anesthetic. So, accidental subarachnoid injections are possible. Segment epidural anesthesia can be used for the analgesia or any segments with fewer size effects. So it is harder to perform a, and the meningeal penetration is likely but an expert can make it work. The most often employed medicines are the lidocaine and procaine which is administered at the dosage of 35 to 45 mg per 100 kg of body weight in a kettle. And occasionally, a vasoconstrictor such as the adrenaline or epinephrine is added to. Oh, that's actually a lot of uh, things to learn and it's really interesting. Like, Since you have mentioned about the cesarean section at the very beginning, can I know like, how do you indicate uh, for the need of C-section? So, uh, cesarean sections or so-called the C-sections removes the fetus through the abdomen and uterus. When a calf can be born naturally, this procedure is used. So bovine caesarean sections alternative includes the standing left para, paralumbar ciliotomy, standing right paralumbar ciliotomy, reclined left paralumbar ciliotomy, and recumbent ventral midline ciliotomy, which has the advantage and disadvantages. So the type of this dystocia how health, surrounding, support, and surgeon's preference determine by the best technique. This includes the mom and baby's health, and a mother is more likely to have a healthy pregnancy if she has an underweight or undeveloped baby. 
it is small or her just uh, gestational age has high drops or has a uh, propulsion paralysis in which your mother cannot have uh, cannot move her uterus and the anesthesia is used where the type of it is the epidural local regional paralumbar and with an alive fetus we are actually avoid to use all these um, general anesthesia Oh, I see. So, what is the suitable treatment for this case? So, pre-operatively, the cow was properly secured and the skin surface of the left paralumbar fossa was prepared aseptically by washing with water and soap and salvon, which is a combination of cetrimide 3% and chlorhexidine gluconate 0.5%. The hair was then trimmed with sharp scissors, shaved with a razor, and thoroughly cleansed with the regular salvan solutions. The region was then uh, cleaned three times with 2% tincture iodine solution to reduce the microbial load and let it to dry until it was ready for the caesarean section. And like, what do we do after that? So after a physical and chemical confinement and aseptic pre uh, preparations of the surgical site, the cow was positioned correctly for surgery. For example, the left flank. So 10 cm below the lumbar transverse process, 40 cm vertical skin incision is made. The incision is then continued into the external and internal abdominal oblique, the transverse abdominal muscles and the peritoneum. All muscle layers and skins were then retracted with the handheld retractor to, to expose the uterus. A finger identified adhesion between the uterus and the lower abdominal wall. This adhesion is gradually, gradually separated and the uterus was then retracted. After determining the calf positions and conditions, the uterus was also incised about 40 cm after the stabilizing the uterus and it removed the calf. The uterus was filled with the animal dark brown blood which was drained and removed with the placenta. So before suturing, the uterus was then cleansed with the serral isotonic saline. During the procedure, bleeding was controlled by utilizing sterile gauze, straight and curved hemostatics forceps and topical epinephrine. Later on, the uterus was then closed with the 1-0 size sterile absorbable polyglycolic acid. The uterus and the surrounding area were cleansed with the sterile isotonic saline solution and reinstalled. Sterile sponge and gauze were used to absorb the peritoneal leakage. After abdominal leverage, the peritoneal incision was closed with the 2-0 sterile polyglycolic acid block stage. All three abdominal layers were individually closed with the 2-0 sterile uh, two zero size sterile absorbable polyglycolic acid. After the two zero silk was made to uh, horizontal interrupter mattress, the region was then cleaned and treated with the two percent uh, tincture iodine and then sent home. Oh, that's so interesting. So, follow to the next topic about prolapse of uterine vagina. Can anyone briefly explain about it? Uh, yes, I'll explain about it. Actually, with the spring calving season approaching, actually many ranges will actually have to deal with like uh, rated uh, uterine and vaginal prolapse usually. These both prolapse are actually closely associated with actually the calving, but each has uh, a distinct cause and actually occurs in a different time. It is important to actually recognize what type of prolapse you're actually dealing with to institute and a uh, to make a proper treatment in a proper type. The both vagina and uterus are actually part of a female reproduction tract, as we know. To understand prolap, it is important to understand how the cow, cow's reproductive tract, tract is arranged. Firstly, the cow uh, in a cow reproductive tract, the vagina and the uterus are actually separated from the by the cervix. The cervix serves to close the uterus off to the outside during pregnancy. During labor, the cervix will dilate to allow the calf to pass out of the uterus through the vagina. 
and out into the world. So while these both are part of the reproductive tract, they are separated anatomically and to serve for a different different purposes. Wow, that's interesting. Can you tell me more about the vagina prolapse and the treatment for it in specific? Yeah, can can. For the vagina prolapse, uh, it's actually known. I mean, it, it's obvious that it's vagina prolapsing. This condition happens uh, happens in day to week before calving. The cervix remains intact, uh, safeguarding the pregnancy. Most uh, crucial is the increase in abdominal pressure due to the growing fetus. A high uh, a high physical condition like age, breed and genetic also uh, predispose calf to prolapses. Her uh, hair faults are actually prone to this prolapse in general. If a cow have a vaginal prolapse once, she's most likely to have another one also. Cooling is actually recommended to prevent this uh, management issue. Lah. Vaginal prolapse are tiny and smooth too. Uh, vagina, I mean, sorry, vagina ex, vagina prolapses are actually tiny and smooth to wrinkle. Vagina prolapse is treated by repositioning the vagina under epidural anesthesia. Uh, Bunner stitches prevent prolapse. Once calving begins, the stitches have to be removed to protect the uh, protect the cow and calf. So, can you explain more about the uterine prolapse, like on the treatments for it, uh, uh, and all about it? Uh, actually, this uterine prolapse is different, uh, different from the vaginal prolapse. After calving, the uterus prolapse throughout the cervix and vagina. Unlike the vaginal prolapse, vag- uh, uterine prolapse reaches till the crown. And for the placentomas, all the calf and cow link are further differentiating factors. Huh? This oblong uh, purple colored structure are uh, elevated. Prior vaginal prolapse, low calcium level and difficult delivery pre- uh, predispose to uterine prolapse. Beef cattle are more likely to have this uh, uterine prolapse comparatively to the other cattle. Early invention when a heifer or a cow has trouble calving in is the greatest way to prevent uterine prolapse. Uh, uterine prolapse are, are an emergency and necessity veterinary care immediately. With the uterus out, the uterine vessel are stained. This thing can actually uh, be on the cow artery and might produce hypovolmentic uh, uh, shock and internal bleeding too actually. So for the transporting can cause and also for transporting factors can also cause trauma and tension on the uterus and its vein too. Uterine prolapse treatment, when, when you talk about uterine prolapse treatment, it is more complicated than the vaginal because the vaginal prolapse is easier to treat than the uterine prolapse. Increased time, uh, increased time of the outside of the body makes it uh, more difficult comparatively, comparatively to the vagina. So for this amputation is sometimes the best treatment to serve for uterine prolapse. Lah. This option allows the cow to rise her calf too. But she must be killed because she will have no more uh, reproductive tract. So the reproductive part doesn't function. So she will be killed usually. And the degree of uterine prolapse implies the cow may need supportive treatment and hospitalization. Uterine prolapse aren't hereditary. So it's not the same as vaginal prolapse because it's, vaginal prolapse is hereditary. Oh, I see. How about for the cow in standing procedure? As for the, if the cow is in a standing procedure, usually it's uh, the cow's uterus is cleansed by rinsing the vulva on a tray of hemlock. If the recumbent, the cow should be rest on a stifle with the hind limb extended caudally. This position tilts the pelvic to help the to help the uterus to replace lah. When extending the cow's hind limb caudally, uh, rise the prolapsed uterus with the hind quarters to avoid tearing the uterus artery also. And applying continuous pressure for the from the cervix section to the apex reduces the prolapse too. Closed fist or palm should be used to avoid uh, 
perforating the uterus lah. And also I have a question, how about for the rectal vaginal lactation? Uh, actually, the rectal vagina laceration, also known as uh, rectal vagina tears, it generally occurs with uh, parturition and causes different levels of injury. How do you differentiate the levels of the injury? Oh, it, uh, it can be differentiated into three types. So, if the injury only happens to the vulva only, it is called type 1 injury, while type 2 is when the injury happens to the vulva and perineal body. Type 3 is when injury happens to the roof of the vagina and floor of the rectum. Um, what is the main cause of this rectal vaginal lactation? So, in horses, when a rectal vagina fistula occurs during the birthing process, it's usually due to a foot of the foal causing the tear. The fistula may also be a result of the manual manipulation that occurs when someone is helping the horse give birth and in some cases, is the result of the mass efforts to deliver their foal. Oh, I see. So, how should we treat this uh, rectal vaginal laceration? Uh, so, for type 1, it can be treated by Catholic procedure. It means like uh, the edges of the vulva lips are sutured, closed to prevent aspiration of air and feces. The length of the Catholic depends on the conformation of the mat. The bottom one third of the vulva remains open to allow normal urination. A uh, castlix is placed under local anesthesia and sutures can be removed 14 days after placement and a permanent seal remains. While for type 2, it is treated by perineal body reconstruction and castlix procedure. Type 3, tests are treated by reconstruction of vagina and rectum plus perineal body reconstruction and castings. I see. Um, can you like uh, tell me about uh, how the how to prepare before the surgery? Oh, so uh, first of all, anesthesia the animal through epidural and local anesthesia, then localize the tail side up and disinfect the area around the wound by iodine. Then ensure the animals do not have diarrhea, but also that the feces are not too hard. Oh, how about the wound stitching? So the stitches should start from the vagina, then cross until the rectal wall and side tear. Next, uh, down through the vagina wall, cross side tear again, last tie the stitch. Oh, wow, it's interesting. So, what can we do after the, after the um, surgery to make the animal feel better? Uh, so, for the post-operative care, animals generally require NSAIDs and often antibiotic therapy due to local tissue damage. So, for cattle, this is typically uh, flunicin, magdumin, and cetiofer or similar antibiotics. For Horses, this is typically either flunicin, megumin, or phenylbutazone and trimethoprim sulfur. So, I think that's all from me. So, is there any other question? No, oh, for me. Oh, it's a uh, interesting and like, yeah, it's an, a very informative presentation. Thank you for all of the efforts and cooperative. So we'll see you next time. Thank, Thank you. you.